Welcome everyone to the Incredicast podcast. I'm Adam Hurst, here with David Kerrigan. And what did we see at Sonoma? A whole lot of nothing was what we saw. <laughs> <laughs> and you would be exactly right. We didn't really see a whole lot of lead changes. Nothing really interesting happened towards the end. But we're here to take you through the entire bit of Sonoma. And started at the start of the weekend, we saw Kyle Larson on the pole. But during the race, he didn't really do do much. He finished 14th, just fell like, fell like a rock. Yeah, which is really surprising for him. We went into the weekend believing that he would make some noise because everyone gives him these creepy nicknames about how great of a driver he is. <laughs> gonna do great young this cash this i don't even have a clue <laughs> young but money. No. yeah okay and the cow jumps over the moon thank you but um but yeah he really could not compete with with aj with harvick with truex and just you know really didn't have it this weekend even though he got pole then aj almond we would we would say that he would be the favorite he would win stage one uh, but that would be because Harvick and Truex pitted and tried to do like these weird pit strategies throughout the stages. And, and really, that would be the theme of the day. Somebody that should have won the stage doesn't win the stage because they pit. So, yeah, that happened. <laughs> <laughs> so AJ wins stage one, but then in stage two, we would see him go up in flames, really, because... Um, he missed the shift. shift. Yeah. Just like Bubba Wallace at Pocono, um, AJ misses a shift and his day would end. I think it's a little bit easier, though, to miss a shift at Sonoma than it is at Pocono, I do have yeah. to say. Because, you know, you're shifting, oh, I don't know, 80 times. <laughs> nah. Uh, you shift a lot at Sonoma, you know. You go into every corner. So, um,. Really sad to see that from him. He was having a great day. He has a fantastic uh, road course background. He was on pace. A lot of times he was putting out, he was on pace to perhaps even go up against the 78 and the 4 and the leaders, but that would end his day. Then for stage two winner, it would be Denny Hamlin once again because pit strategy, he stays out, wins the stage. Harvick and Truex do not get stage points, neither did Kyle Busch. So the big three didn't even get stage points the entire day. Oh my, I guess they're not going to win the championship now. <laughs> they're not in the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> now they're the small threes. <laughs> And then in stage three, the only really notable thing that really happened, uh, besides Blaney's power steering going going out, uh, would be the strategy call by Cole Pern and Martin Truex, uh, faking a pit call, faking out the four team, and cruising to a victory at Sonoma. Yeah, um, in the 1940s, during the Second World War, there were some Canadians allied with the Germans actually they were part of the fascist party and Cole Pern has to have some relation to them because he used the German e Higma um, with his coded words and just stuff like that oh my goodness he faked out the entire top um, cars uh, Harvick Kyle the entire field that was up there he faked them out um, I don't know. Maybe he has some Navajo in him, you know, <laughs> at the code breakers. Who, who knows? But um, he was down by one second um, to Harvick, and then afterwards was up by 10 seconds. So that was a huge call. That was. Uh, I'm pretty sure that they practiced that and they told each other about that, you know. But um, yeah, that was a fantastic call by him so and speaking of which that would take the 78 into victory lane a race that he probably should have won last year could have won last year for sure um and just with the problems lost horsepower i believe and then he blew up so but yes martin truex goes to 
victory lane at Sonoma. Finally, um, he did win though at Sonoma a while ago in the fifty six, right? Yeah, yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was so, like two thousand twelve, somewhere in there. So he, he won that, but he's been here before. So yeah, a great call by them. <laughs> the only interesting thing that really happened in this race was that. So. Thank you for giving us something to talk about. <laughs> uh, but our picks for these races, we're, we're starting to nail it. <laughs> One, two this week. Uh, I picked Turex and you picked, point, yeah. you picked Harvick. So we're getting there. <laughs> Which, I mean, I there. <laughs> it's not really hard to pick out of four drivers that go in a race. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah. But you do have to give props to AJ Allmendinger. Yeah. He would have been up there. They probably could have tried something, maybe to match Truex's call and maybe beat him. But we'll never know. This year, is, this year has been filled with what if, what if situations. So we'll never know. Who knows? I don't think Hamlin though gets any props. He just stayed out. Yeah, it really wasn't too fast, comparatively speaking. I think but. that really says something about his entire year, though. Like. He's there, yeah. but he, he's not really fast, so not really... He's not, yeah, fast enough to really be in consideration, but at the same time, he's there in the top 10, but he's really not. I mean, when you have a teammate in Kyle Busch, um, who's really not your teammate, however, you know, has the same car as you drive for the same organization, um, they're not teammates, though, for sure, but... When you have a companion, I should say, in <laughs> Kyle Busch, who's winning all these races, and then the 78 has the same cars, I know they're doing different things strategy-wise, of course, you know, um, in car setups. But, I mean, it really begs the, the question. Eric Jones, Denny Hamlin, even Daniel Suarez, what are you doing? Well, what are you people doing? Why can't you win races like Truex and Kyle Busch? Why can't you, you know, step up to the plate? I mean, yeah. Kyle Busch is... Winning races, fighting the four and the seventy-eight, and meanwhile Hamlin, week by week, is going to town against the Hendrick stable. Really? <laughs> so, who knows? Yeah, uh, maybe we'll see them pick it up in the, the closing ten races before the playoffs, uh, or maybe they'll just be like Jimmy Johnson, come out of nowhere to win the championship. Well, we don't know. We'll have to find out. But uh, with, yeah, who knows? with that, uh, Fox says goodbye for 2018. And now we'll say hello to NBC and Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's finally back. I'm sure everyone missed him. It hasn't even been a year. But for Dale Jr. fans, it's been long enough. For he <laughs> is back on TV for NASCAR. Um, so, so yeah, he's back. <laughs> Dale's back. Okay. Next thing we're talking about, uh, Chicago land, um, another mile and a half. So nothing really new, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Uh, Chicago is, it's a track that it's not really raced, um, like, the previous tracks that we've been to, it's kind of like a Michigan um, where you got guys like Truex and Kyle Push in the 18 and also the 42 car um, and probably Harvick because, I mean, hey, he's been there every race so far. So it's probably going to be another installment of NASCAR 2018 where we see the same top five. Uh, um, who knows? We saw some rain come in at Michigan. Yeah. Gave it to Clint Boyer. We saw some other factors occur at some other tracks, so who knows? Yeah, it's pretty bad when we have to basically pray for rain to have a different winner. <laughs> <laughs> but um so who do you think will win Chicagoland out of those four or or who else can actually compete with with Out the, of those four. Yeah, yeah no no. <laughs> it's out of those four. Yeah. Well, I mean, you ask me, who do I think can win it or will win it? And I pull up Ike Joy and just say, all of them. Um, <laughs> it's really gotten to the point of where we 
go to these tracks where it's all car. It's not really driver. Anyone can drive the track if you have a fast car. Um, it could be Harvick. It could be Truex. It could be it could be the flag man if he goes out with a fast car. Um, so who knows? Um, I pick, however. I'm going to try the wild card here because why not at this point <laughs> in the season. Um, I'm going to go with a fast forward. His teammate's been doing great. He almost won the Daytona 500. I'm going with Eric Amarola in the 10 because he's been up there. Um, his teammates have been up there. Kurt Busch is the only other teammate. Esther Haas who has not won a race. Um, the, the, at 10 car, he's been improving every week. Who knows? <laughs> Some crashes. Take out the leaders. Aliens come down. Take Kevin Harvick. <laughs> Yeah, we're here to just take Harvick. We have some races we need to win. Is it like the, you know, like that Michael Jordan movie <laughs> like back in the 90s? <laughs> Space Jam. He's the only one who can... <laughs> He's the only one who can save the Earth. We need so. Kevin Harvick so he can race in a <laughs> space race. Um, but actually, for my pick, I'm going to go the same route. Pick a teammate. But it's not who you think it is. I think we'll go with uh, Kurt Busch. I think he'll finally get that win, size up to his teammates, and try to go for a playoff spot. Cool. <laughs> Watch us be horribly wrong, and then they and both then crash for stage. It's like all of the Gibbs cars in the top five, including Truex, and it's you know <laughs> Hendrick does actually good. Well, that's not happening either way. Yeah. But, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Hendrick fans. But so yes. It is not 2001 anymore. I'm sorry. Or 2006, 7, 8, 9, or 10. So that is it for talking about Sonoma. I almost forgot what track we were talking about. Where are we um, at again? <laughs> yeah. But, however, speaking of which, that has to hang the question up. Should road courses, which I don't ask, I only ask two of them, but should road courses have stages? Well, the the correct answer to that would be they should not have stages because the pit strategy, other than true X's, seemed really artificial, and it's like we already know what's going to happen. So, you know, there's so much more strategy that can go on if you don't know when a caution is coming out. You know, so yeah, which it's yeah. it's debatable. Sure if we should actually have them for for super speedways or or anywhere for that matter but super speedways and road courses i think should not have stages yeah i feel the same way for sure um because with road courses it's totally different you have a large track um where you know there's supposed to be green flag racing talladega daytona there's going to be crashes you know, you go to Martinsville, you go to Bristol, you go to any track, you know, there's going to be cautions. It's an oval, of course, so those things are going to arise, those things are going to happen. However, at at these types of tracks that we have, like Walking the Clan and Sonoma, most of the races, um, most of the situations that occur during these types of races happen under green flag, you know, with the pitch strategy, green flag pitch strategy, when just the whole entire thing um, should happen under green flag. It's it kind of resets the field, I guess, if you could say that, yeah. um, at road courses because you're trying to pass cars and you're trying to, you know, had a lead and actually race at a road course. However, you know, every 10 seconds, there's a caution. So. Plus, I mean, it's like this weekend, there was only like 25 lap stages. I mean, if What's we, the point? If we do right? have stages, I think it should only be like you have one stage and then you have the final stage. Not one stage, one more stage, and then final stage, you yeah. know? Caution every two laps because <laughs> we're NASCAR and we need to be exciting. Because if we don't throw trash cans, <laughs> you know, all over the racetrack and then say, oh, oh we have debris in turn seven or eight, you know, 
Yeah. Wolf's nuts. So, who knows? But that was Sonoma. Yeah, so going to Chicagoland next, mile and a half. And then after that, it would be the anniversary of Incredicast. So, a lot of monumental stuff going on for us. <laughs> this small little chubby baby is now one year old. So, <laughs> yeah. So, wow. Yeah, if you enjoyed this week's podcast, uh, click subscribe down below and uh, tell us what you think. Should road courses have stages? Yes or no? And we'll see you at Chicagoland.